It was August 9th, 1945. An American bomber flew towards Nagasaki, Japan. A thick fog hung over the city, and the pilots couldn't see their target because of it. They were about to abandon their mission, when suddenly there was an opening in the fog, and they saw below them the Urakrami Cathedral, and realized that the city below them was Nagasaki. They dropped the atomic bomb. Three days earlier, the same type of bomb had been dropped on the city of Hiroshima. The results of the bombings were not known until days later when rescue crews went into the cities. The immediate target areas had been completely wiped out. In other areas, houses were burning. Cries of help could be heard from people buried alive in the debris. Burnt, blackened corpses covered the ground. Later, survivors began to emerge from the ruins, some of them terribly disfigured, parts of their bodies missing, eyes liquefied, and their flesh hanging in strips from their bones. A devastating sight. 300,000 innocent people perished in the world's first nuclear holocaust. Could there be a second? Do we need one? Nowadays, bombs are hundreds of times more powerful than the ones used on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. If today one nuclear bomb was to be dropped on one of our cities, millions of innocent men, women, and children would die on the spot. And what is worse, millions more would be left almost dead, slowly dying from the radiation. Why do we make these bombs? To protect ourselves from our enemies? Who are our enemies? Were the children attending school in Hiroshima our enemies? Or were the people attending mass at the Urakrami Cathedral in Nagasaki our enemies? Nagasaki was the first and largest Christian city in Japan. The crew of the American bomber were Christians. They had gone on their mission with the blessing of their chaplain. In an interview with the chaplain, years after the bombing, he mentioned that over the years he had begun to realize that what he had said and done during the war was wrong and that the only way he could be a true Christian was to become a pacifist. To remember Hiroshima is to dedicate oneself to peace. These words were spoken by Pope John Paul II in 1981 when he visited the Memorial Peace Park in Hiroshima. In his speech addressed to the leaders of the world, he asked them to pledge themselves to peace through justice and to never consider war as a means of solving disputes. He then spoke to the young people of the world, asking them to try and help create a new future by helping those throughout the world who suffer from injustice, sickness, hunger, and oppression. In other words, replacing violence and hatred with understanding and love. In 1982, it was estimated that the total amount of money required to feed, house, educate all the people of this world would come to a total of 17 billion dollars a year the same amount that is spent on arms every two weeks there can never be worldwide peace while there is still injustice injustice is the key to war 20 percent of the world's population lives in luxury while the other 80 are still in need if we really want peace then we must work towards the redistribution of world wealth. Although it may seem like a big task, peace is not impossible. It can start with each one of us deciding whether to give or to take, by you and I setting peace as our ideal and expressing it in our lives.